Good morning. Welcome to Morning Devotions. Always great to have you with us. And I suppose because I know some of you listen to it in the afternoon or evening. Good afternoon. Good evening. Again, whenever you tune in, it's wonderful to have you with us. As you know, we are in the middle of the series as we begin 2021 of finishing well and starting strong. And today, for the next three days, this week actually, I thought I would um, explain my sign-off that I have been using since the beginning of the pandemic. And that is, of course, be hope-filled, stay strong, and God bless. Don't turn off. (laughs) I'll say it at the end, too. But uh, um, I thought I'd take each one of those phrases and talk a little bit about them. And this morning, we'll, we'll just work uh, one uh, from the beginning and work back. And actually, each one of those phrases build on one another. And the first one, of course, is be hope-filled. And let me read the text. It's from Romans chapter 15, 12 through 13. Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul's prayer for the Romans is my prayer for you. May you overflow with hope. In fact, that's what I try to say with hope filled is, you know, people have asked me, well, pastor, isn't it hopeful? And and I would say, well, yes, it is hopeful, but it's more Christian hope. It's, it, it should overflow in you as you get to know your Lord. And that's why at the end I say hope-filled. I hope, uh, you, it's hard not to use that word that you are just simply over full, overfilled with hope and that leaks out your pores and that uh, people see it and become hopeful also. Um, now, you might think that's, that's kind of ridiculous, Pastor. First of all, I'm not an optimist. I'm much more of a pes- pessimist. Well, Hope is different than optimism. Now, I'm reading a book right now called The Biography of Paul by N.T. Wright. And he gives a definition of hope, or at least the way uh, first century Jews in the early Christian church looked at hope. And uh, I thought it was such a great definition. I thought I'd read it to you. Dr. Wright writes, Hope and optimism are not the same thing. The optimist looks at the world and feels good about the way it's going. Things are looking up. Everything's going to be all right. But hope, at least conceived within the Jewish and then the early Christian world, was quite different. Hope could be, and often was, a dogged and deliberate choice when the world seemed dark. It depended not on a feeling about the way things were or the way things were moving, but faith, faith in the one God. This God had made the world. This had God had called his people, had called Israel to be his people. The scriptures, not least the Psalms, had made it clear that this God could be trusted to sort things out in the end and to be true to his promises. That's hope. It's trusting God to be true to his promises. Hope is trusting God with your future. No matter what the present looks like, no matter what confronts you, no matter how you think the world is going, you can have hope because you can trust our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with our future. Let's have a word of prayer. 
Father God, I, uh, I give you thanks that you have our future in your hands. And even as we make our way through this broken creation, we trust like a good shepherd and his flock of sheep. You will see us through. And that's our hope. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, be hope-filled, stay strong, and God bless.